We have more on Boeing's issues with the 737 MAX and the view from the shareholder perch. We're joined now by Tim Lesko. He's a partner at Granite Investment Advisors. Granite owns more than 26,600 shares of Boeing. And here on set is Sheila Kayalu. She's the analyst over at Jefferies. It's nice to have you both with us. I'll start with you, Sheila. It's nice to see you. You have a buy 390 price target. Wavering at all on that? No, I mean, we've cut our price target tremendously as we've included two things, more concessions to the airlines as this has dragged longer and additional charges to the profitability of this plan. So we've cut that from 30 percent to 24 uh, and hence our price target is down to 390. You trust Boeing? I think what's happened is with the free cash flow impact, we've lowered our expectations. So that's embedded in there. And we don't think this is binary anymore where you get return to service and the stock is off to the races. It takes a while for it to re-rate for the customer to regain confidence, for the consumer to regain confidence. This may sound extreme, but what happens if the MAX never gets back in the air, number one? And even if it does, what happens if people don't fly it? So we have a 275 DCF if the MAX never gets in the air. So don't forget, they still have the wide body portfolio, the 777X we were just talking about, uh, the 787 defense and a service business. So it's not game over if the MAX doesn't get back in the air, but obviously it's 50% market share on the oh, air bodies. But, so discounted cash flow of $275 right. if it never flies again. If it does fly again, I mean, give me the context. How much worse is that compared to what we all thought originally? I mean, the stock hit 300 this week, so it's kind of reaching that breaking point. That assumes we never see another MAX or an NG, so Boeing has to spend 10 years of a development cycle to build that future small aircraft. What percentage chance do you put on it never flying again? I think 5%. You know, I think, ironically, the longer this has gone on with the FAA and, and Boeing to make this aircraft safer, it's created more concerns with the customer. So it's had the inverse impact on the perception of this aircraft. Tim, put us into the mind of a shareholder. Well, certainly it's been a frustrating year, year and a half for Boeing. Um, I reiterate what your other guest has said, is, and it's very unlikely this is not going to fly again. You're not going to set up to build planes before you're set to do deliveries this summer if you don't think it's going to fly again. I think Boeing needs to regain the trust of the investor public and regain the trust of flyers, and that will just take some time. It takes a long time to get and maintain a premium multiple in the marketplace, and it takes a very short time to destroy that, and I think that's what we're most worried about. Our airline correspondent, Phil LeBeau, has something for you guys. Phil? Well, I just heard you guys asking Sheila a number of questions about if the MAX never flies again, and I know that 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 idea has been percolating a little bit more with the latest round of delays with the MAX. I have to tell you, I have talked with a number of people at the FAA, which is the primary regulator uh, that's going to have to certify this plane first. And even the most critical, the most critical people at the FAA of Boeing, they don't believe that this plane will never fly again. So while I know people want to say, well, and you can never say never, we thought this plane would be back in the air by now, I can tell you emphatically that the belief is this plane will be certified and will be deemed safe to return to service. There is nobody who is looking at this saying, I don't know, I don't think this plane should get back in the air. So I, I think everyone keeps questioning management and questioning how we regain trust and certainty that the business model is the right business model. This morning we have the 777X being brought to the market and there's questions surrounding that is the plane too expensive at 450 million is the plane too big for an industry that wants to fly into smaller air, uh, airports and wants the 787 or the Airbus 350 how can we have any confidence looking forward that even once we're past this max issue that this is the right management team and this is the right strategy looking forward so we've seen several management changes to kind of abate that risk, right, on the management side. And communication is hard because this is something no one anticipated would take close to a year. So I think that's that. On the 777X, Phil talked about a backlog of 300 firm orders or so. That's across 10 operators. It's usually the Middle East that likes to buy those bigger planes. We're much more bullish on the 787. That's the smaller uh, wide body that uh, Boeing offers. We like that aircraft because we think you'll have more point to Boeing reliability with an aircraft like that versus a 777X carrying 360 passengers around. Tim, in, Tim, in terms of the new management and pushing back expectations of when the 737 MAX will fly again, do you think that is just them trying to set the bar low so they can beat it? And, and if so, why didn't they push it back a, a little bit further? I ask because 
How badly do you think the stock would react if they did have to issue another delay, albeit even a, a small one, given that this is the new management trying to shake off, as, as Sheila kind of just referenced to, the, the issues of trust that the old management had? Well, I, I think that management is really trying to kitchen sink probably this quarter. Everybody knows they're going to need to take a large charge, uh, both for the production issues and for the rec recompensation to the airlines. So in our mind, Calhoun is coming in and he's really setting the bar very, very low in order to beat it. You haven't had a positive piece of news out of Boeing in eight months. Hasn't worked on the 777, hasn't worked on the 737, and hasn't worked on the space program. So they really need a win, and I think they're setting themselves up for one.